does a five-year plan take you? Is it an increased membership rates or larger location? I mean, I just don't understand growth. So the growth, um, I mean, ultimately, and we're already talking with some people outside of Virginia Beach. Um, we're doing some consulting with some other people who would like to do this in this area. So uh, potentially opening up a, a space in Norfolk. But once we get to full utilization, meaning that you know we're at a multiple where the hot desking uh, is gone, we ultimately want to have our own building. We want to buy um, a piece of property and have it be larger um, to offer more people space. Um, but. Yeah, another location and expanding this location or getting a new one in Virginia Beach. Um, I think at the point that we have about 100 members at this location, we're going to be maxed out. We're going to need additional capacity. Yes. What, what is your occupancy rate that you break even at? Uh, so it's about 35 um, community members and 10 uh, full-time members. Um, and a, and a some amount of events. Yes. Yeah. Roughly 45% of capacity, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're definitely not, not at capacity. We're, we're probably at about 20%. You break even at about 45% of your capacity, Bill, you said 100 is your capacity. Uh, well, so that 100 is based on not everybody's going to be there at the same time. Right. Um, the other thing that we do, we rent out the, um, the conference rooms and we let people use the space in the building. So the information security training that was done there uh, was a three-day thing that they used the garage area. Um, for, for three full days, and so we do a lot of those that aren't really uh, members per se. So we have, you know, in our pro forma and our, our budget, um, we basically have, you know, certain events and things that we do um, outside of just the membership base. So what's the difference between the two memberships, the community and the full time? So the community just gets you access to uh, join the building, get access to come into the building and work for one full day, and then you can a la carte buy quarter day, half day, and full day passes, and you get discounted rates on um, use of the conference rooms. Um, the other one gets you 24 by 7 access to the building. You don't have to you know, top up and buy uh, passes to come in. Do you, do you consider yourself an incubator or an accelerator? Not really. Um, so we don't facilitate the programs. However, <coughs> they're just uh, organically through collaboration, there is some aspect of that. There's people there that have successfully started companies and transitioned. Um, and so there is some of that organically happening. Uh, but we're looking to work, and we're working with um, a few different groups right now to try and bring a, a best um, kind of solution to Virginia Beach. Um, and so we're, you know, we're talking with a number of different people in the area as well as outside the area. Ultimately, our initial plan was to partner with The Bunker, which is a uh, veteran incubator out of Chicago and bring them here along with Vets in Tech, which is a, um, a nonprofit that does a lot of uh, technology uh, employment education and entrepreneurship <coughs> training to help veterans transition. Um, we haven't been able to convince them that Hampton Roads is a, um, a great place because they don't understand it. They say, just go up to DC, you know, and just go to the meetings there, go to the, and we say, that's three and a half hours uh, by helicopter on a good day. But they look at the map, they're in San Francisco or Chicago, they look at the map and they go, it's only that far. So, um, but ultimately, we, we need to have something like that either partner with us inside the building or that has access to the building that can funnel people into it. And what, uh, just a quick follow up, what, what are you, have the, I didn't see the, the fees back there, but for somebody that's coming in and using just a small space, what, what, what are you charging for that? So if it was full time, it would be $285 a month. And that includes their internet? And, and what else? Um, coffee, water, bathroom, parking. Printers. Um, I mean, we don't have any private office space. It's all open, collaborative, drop-in space right now. Um, and it probably will be for as long as we're in this building because there's not really any good ways to break this building up to have private office space. So that's kind of one place where, you know, we've gotten a lot of requests that we haven't been able to manage. And that's sort of in our plan of like, if we were to expand to another building in the Vibe District or buy a building, then we would, that's, you know, we kind of have a list of things that we need to solve in our next space or the next iteration of our space already. Two things, but, but you do have a conference room that they can sign up for and utilize uh, credit. Correct. Mm -hmm. And we're working on building in the back of our building some private phone booth type spaces, so some small rooms that people can kind of pop in and out of to take private calls or have like a private one-on-one -on -one meeting. 
So right now that our conference rooms aren't at full utilization, we let our members go in and out of the conference rooms to take calls and work. But as those start to get booked, we know that we're going to need to you know, work on building these phone booths in the back. As still in the startup phase, it's been three or four months now, what, what has been a lot different than you would initially thought in starting this business? And how did you adjust uh, to that circumstance? Um, I mean, I think, you know, I think we did think that we were going to be able to partner with someone that was an incubator. I think we did think we were going to have a lot of technologists. We were going to have, you know, we were going to somehow target veterans. Um, I think we also thought that we were going to have a harder time getting the word out and getting members. And so, you know, we haven't really partnered with anyone per se. We don't have a lot of programming yet that anybody is helping us with. We're doing everything ourselves right now, but we have we've been getting on average about two members a week. So, and we're not really doing any advertising. People are just coming to the door and we don't even have a sign on the building. Um, so that's been really good. I think the community itself has grown organically faster um, than we thought it would. Um, the other thing was is that we went into it expecting that we were gonna get some members and let those people help us shape the space into what it turned into. And so we also kind of went into it with an open mind thinking, Whoever the first five, 10, 15 members are, we want to collaborate with them on what types of things they need. And so I think the space is growing in a way that it's um, meeting the needs of the customers that we have right now, uh, but not in a way that's so set in stone that if anybody were to leave and somebody knew where to come in that we couldn't um, you know, make it work for them too. I mean, we've already replaced some tables, we've already replaced some chairs. You know, Whenever we're ready to spend more money, we reach out to our membership base and go, hey, we're gonna spend X amount of dollars. What do you guys want? You want another couch? You want stand-up desks? You know, and we're getting feedback and we're kind of making sure that we're getting people, getting them the things that they're gonna use. How many square feet? Yeah. 4,500 square feet. <coughs> Good size building. Okay. 22 parking spots, which those in front is uh, pretty good. I, I really like the presentation. I especially like where you showed you where you each came from and you know you specifically said you intersected at this point spoken like a true IT people um, I thought that was great but I was kind of surprised when you got to the one slide where you were working out uh, and you mentioned that you were a veteran you didn't expand on that anymore I think you could probably add a little bit more of your your uh, veteran background and thank you for your service by the way sure, thank you, thank you. Um, I think you might want to put that in that beginning part before you know where you're intersecting or wherever that falls in and you know play a little bit more to that because that, that's really important and particularly in this area yeah yeah in this community you know don't don't under underplay that don't undervalue it but uh, thank you for your service and did i miss what does the name come from 1701, did I miss that? That's our address. <laughs> okay. Um. It's, also, it's also the whole number of the USS Enterprise. Okay. So, yeah. And it's 501 PM in military time. I thought maybe I missed it, but I didn't, I didn't understand what 1701 referred to. Our address is 1701 Baltic Ave. Um, we, you know, so we had our consulting company, and when we went to lease the building, we thought like, oh, we'll think of a name later. We're just gonna sign the lease under the consulting company. We tried to get insurance on the building, and they were like, no, you can't have all these different businesses under this one LLC. Like you need, and so the real estate agent was like, just make an LLC. Just call it like 1701 Group or something. And so we created this LLC called 1701. We figured we just create a DBA name later, and then we just like made a logo and moved on. And Plus, now we're listed first on the new Vibe District website. <laughs> so I have a few questions. Um, you mentioned in your presentation that Virginia Beach wanted this, and I definitely think there's a need for this. Absolutely, I've said that for years. Did Virginia Beach Economic Development step in to provide any sort of resources, support, funding um, to help get this off the ground, or have you talked to them about expansion, promotion, anything like that? Uh, I mean, I would say 90% of the help that we've gotten from economic development is just Ray. I mean, Ray's been awesome. I think, you know, from the moment that Jeff and Ray met, they, you know, they were kind of talking about the plans for that other building that's kind of diagonal across from us on 17th Street. Um, Ray kind of helped us, you know, we would meet with him every couple weeks. He would send us properties that were for rent. He sent us that lovely pink building that we almost leased. 
Um, but no, I mean, no, we haven't gotten any funding. The economic development has been working on some different promotional materials and stuff like that, so we've sent them some images. I think you guys finished putting that stuff together. So, I mean, he's been great. He stops by a lot and drops off information and brings people by. So I'd say, you know, not, not really anything, no money, but, you know, the assistance that we've gotten from Ray has been invaluable. I, I can tell you that um, <coughs> my district, and I'd like for you to talk a little bit more about that. I know you've been busy setting up, but certainly you've been interacting with them. There are programs through the five district uh, to help startup companies and small companies uh, there that's uh, handled through the uh, cultural arts uh, department uh, of the city. As far as the program uh, we have within economic development, uh, we do have a grant program, but it's based on two criteria. It's based on uh, the amount of investment that a company makes, and it's it's made uh, it's also geared on the new jobs created within that entity. So what happens on a small business, unfortunately, is they create one or two jobs, and they put money into upfitting the, the building somewhat, but it's not like building a new building. It's, it's not like creating 15, 20, 30 jobs, which is how you can take advantage of that program. But through the, the, uh, uh, the Vibe District and that program, there are some, some things that they can plug into that would certainly help them from that end. Uh, and again, I, I think we more and more realize uh, and have put more time and effort in that small businesses are an important and key part of our community where four or five years ago, I, I think the emphasis was on you know, getting in that big company. So now uh, through our SCRAM program, we've got a, a gentleman named Jeff Smith, some of you that we work with uh, through that, that helps a small woman and minority businesses. That's what the SCRAM acronym is for, and has various program and training to, to uh, provide to small companies to help them out. So uh, they're, they're <coughs> do more, yes, but there are some things that we not only by 17 and one, but by other small businesses too. So thank you, appreciate that. Uh, the next question is, have you guys looked at providing like virtual office services? So for example, right now I'm with Office Space. I work from home mostly, but I have a virtual office at Office Space and Solutions over on Corporation Lane. And so for $50 a month there, I get the discounted conference room, meeting room space, plus a mailbox, plus they'll email me letting me know I have mail. Um, and it gives me a business address outside of my home address. Have you guys looked into exploring that? <coughs> yeah, so we we do have a mail, like an office address plan. It's like an extra $45 on top of our membership plan. So we just had one of our, our members sign up for that and we had another one ask for it. So we you know, kind of stuck it on our sheet and said we were gonna offer it. We haven't spent a whole bunch of time on it yet because nobody was interested. So now that two people signed up for it, we're gonna figure that out next. <laughs> So. And we do it a little bit different, so we, we actually um, become a mail agent for you, scan the scan it, drop it into Dropbox, Google Drive, Evernote, whatever, and then you get it, so you don't even have to come by to pick it up, unless you wanted to. And then the last question is, I found out about 1701 uh, via presentation that uh, the ODU Innovation Center for Enterprise, Center for Enterprise Innovation, made to the Joint City Schools Broadband Task Force. And they just happened to mention, you know, the work that they were doing Norfolk, and then 1701 came up in their presentation as a possible partner for them in Virginia Beach. Where are you guys in that process of talking to them about partnering with them and maybe becoming that Virginia Beach presence for the work that they're doing? This is the first we're hearing. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, Sounds we, like we need that connection. <laughs> we're definitely interested. Um, uh, you know. Okay. There was there was a meeting set up. I facilitated it between Chris here, who represents yeah. the U Innovation Center. Yeah. Jeff and Lisa, so uh, you know there, there has been a connection. It's uh, certainly when you start a new business as they are, and also Chris's Innovation Center is brand new too. Uh, things don't happen as quickly as you like, but uh, I got a good feeling they'll be talking. Soon. Yeah, and I thought you were actually talking about broadband initiative. Well, it was just part of that meeting. Okay, yeah. So we we have we met with Chris, and, uh, I mean, and we will again. Yeah, we just need to. You know, it's one of those things. I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> partnerships we're working on. You know, we some some have a makerspace. Uh, to allow our members to have the ability to go over there uh, kind of for a discounted fee for their members to come over and use our facility um, and a few other ones that we're working on as well. Thank you. Yes. Uh, some questions on your internet services there. So first of all, I've worked from home on 
you know, for the last few years myself. And one of the things uh, I used were some sort of video conferencing. And it sounds like your layout isn't going to be very conducive to that if you're wide out in the open. So what provisions have you made uh, for members to have access to that? Because that was a key part of my business. In fact, I actually did consulting training by video conferencing. So that would pretty much kill you right there. I needed the privacy of my own home. I had like a home set for making videos and stuff like that. And that's going to be a kind of a key component. So is that something you're looking forward to? And there are a couple of follow-ups to that one, yeah. That's where we're kind of going with the, the phone booths. I mean, so we already sort of have that problem where we have a couple members who are on the phone some days, all day long. And right now we're, you know, I don't want to say that we're lucky because we would love to have the conference rooms rented out, but they can go in the conference rooms and do that stuff. But on the day that the conference rooms are booked, right now that's a, that's a problem for us. We don't have a space for that to happen. And so we need to get those phone booths built. So we ordered a door and we have all the materials to build the first one. We just haven't quite gotten to it yet. So it's on the priority list. So at, at some point in the next couple of weeks, we'll get that first one built, test it out, see how it works. If it works, we'll build another one. And if it doesn't work, then we'll just come up with another design and rebuild the first one. Okay. So I mean, some of your clients might want to present that they're actually somehow in an office or something. So right. I don't know what your phone booth is going to look like, but I don't want to be sitting in a box talking to people. Yeah. So you might want to think about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to be like a four by seven space, and it'll have walls okay. and okay. you know lighting. Just something you should and, think about. Yeah, we, we definitely, you know, we wanted to have the right acoustics so that someone can be on the phone in there and not sound like they're in a bathroom. All right. Yeah. The next question was when you're talking about what, what kind of what are you talking about for internet, Ethernet, uh, Wi-Fi. If so, I mean, there are a lot of concerns with security when you're talking about public Wi-Fi. So how are you proactively addressing? A lot of people don't think about it. They'll just set up shop and start doing stuff on their computer and not think about how they're connecting. Have you guys thought of that and how are you proactive about yeah. securing and protecting? Yeah, so um, right now, and I was going to show you the, the private room uh, that can be used for that, but so uh, right now we have a, a fiber connection. It's 500 uh, meg uh, both ways. Um, and internally, it is um, blocked by a system that only allows members to be on it. Um, but each member, I mean, if you were a hacker, you could get on to, you know, see what another member was doing. like MAC address restrictions? Or um, yeah, so it's, it's a radius-enabled uh, authentication, um, and there's a device that goes in between um, our system and the public internet that um, ties into our member management system. And so that's how we're able to know that you run out of time to top up and if you try to log in. It, well, it's good to hear, A, that you've actually thought of that rather than like, oh, uh, well, we set up a router. <laughs> and everyone can log in. No, I mean, everyone's so. logged in, and we can, you know, we can kind of monitor the internet traffic a little bit if we needed to. I mean, we're not really that, doing that's cool. that. But, I mean, a lot yeah. of people think Wi Fi is just hook up a router to your internet connection and off you go. And so yeah, so it, 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 is, it, it is secure, um, you know, wireless. Um, there's people that are in the building that based on what they're doing, they are using a VPN service, which no matter where you're at, I don't care what you're doing, if you're doing something you don't want people to know, use a trusted VPN, uh, but so, and some people are. That could be something you could add on to a membership too. You could set up a VPN through, I saw you at Amazon. <coughs> right, so we, we have one that we use. Um, yeah. We haven't really had anybody who requested it yet, um, but definitely could. Yeah, only the members can access it. And then we can do a daily guest code for people when they come in. Who was next? Did you have any Full disclosure, I work for Cox Business, so it's my <laughs> job. So, um, but anyways, um, I do have a curiosity point on that. Um, if I was one of your customers and wanted to have a business telephone number, is everyone working cell phones? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. We so we use, um, and if anybody's heard of it, we can talk more about it. But we use a thing called Twilio, um, and that's what we use for our phone system. Which literally, we just pay a dollar a month for a dial-in ID, and it rings to both of our cell phones. So if um, I'm a member, I can get a, a VID or basically my own phone number there and forward sure. cell phone. Sure. Like yep. If somebody asks for that, um, we'll set it up, no problem. Um, I'd love to talk more. We, um, in full disclosure, we talked to uh, Lumos and offered to be a, um, a center for them to bring a, a gigabit connection in yeah. so they could bring customers in to see what a gigabit really means. So if you want to, um, whoever's first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You say you're, you're not getting traction with the veteran businesses. Is that because they're not there or they're not interested in this or you just haven't talked to them for them? I mean, so part of it is, you know, like how do you target them? So, I mean, and here, here was my basic premise behind it. So I, I left 
I, I left Virginia Beach. I was here my whole life. I was born at the Portsmouth Naval Hospital. I joined the Navy to see the world and somehow ended up getting stationed here. Um, and then I got out and somehow was here and I was like, I gotta get out of here. And so I went to Seattle, I worked for Amazon. And there's a lot of people like that, that they're here and they have great skill sets, technology, whatever it is, awesome workers, and they leave the area. And so one of my friends went to Northwestern's uh, business school, kind of like uh, in Doc Day or whatever, and a third of the people who were, that were veterans were from this area. And they were leaving and probably never coming back. So one thing we're trying to figure out is how do we capture those people before they leave? Um, and that's really hard, because you can't tie into TAP, they're not gonna let you, and you know, all these different things. So then you get them after the fact, and sometimes it's too late at that point. So, you know, just through online uh, communities, LinkedIn, um, Facebook, things where I'm tied in with, you know, former, you know, shipmates and things like that, um, I've been using that to kind of test the waters. Um, the best uh, success we've had really is getting a few people from the Honor Foundation, um, you know, and then, you know, trying to work in with USO and uh, Wounded Wear and some of those guys say, like, hey, is there anybody that you know of that might be starting something up? So, um, part of it, I think, is our fault for not figuring out how to get a direct line to the people who might be looking for it. So if you have any ideas, or I'd love to hear about them. Right. Yes. The, uh, of the 258 a month that you're talking about, <clears throat> are these month-to-month -month leases, basically? It's not a lease. Um, it's not a contract. You pay it. If you don't want to do it anymore, you stop, and uh, we won't charge you again. So. All right, so if you had to kick anybody out yet for not paying you? Uh, that's no, gonna no, no, because it's a, it's an automated uh, credit card thing. So if their credit card doesn't go, we um, we contact them, and then if they said, "Oh, I don't want to do it anymore," great. We just click one button, and it restricts access to the door and the internet. And, um, and, you know, and we also want to know why. You know, did we do something wrong, or is there a better place for them to go, or or did they outgrow? Whatever the case is, but um, yeah, it's it's pretty seamless. What else? Does that work when you or have that you no know, contract kind of thing for budgeting and financial planning for you? To me, that would be a big uh, risk factor. So, so right now we have zero percent churn. That's, that's what you guys use in your business. So like, um, that's the best. Like churn, man. Yeah, yeah. So, so no churn. Um, obviously, uh, you know, we did budget in for a specific amount of churn. Um, and, and at some point, we'll definitely have it. You know, somebody's going to move out of the area, or whatever. Um, and so we, you know, we have a target. And, um, is going to manage to do that. Okay. We also, I mean, for our community members, so they have discounted drop-in rates, and so our community members are all paying forty-five dollars a month when they get one their first drop-in day. So basically, if you work that out with our numbers, the day passes.